Hello everyone, welcome to my video on supply and demand and perfectly competitive firms. We're going to be linking our supply and demand market and the behavior of individual firms within that market and seeing how it all relates in the short run and also a brief idea of the transition to the long run. So the market has a lot of firms. We make a lot of assumptions. You can read your book to get a long list of them all. But among them is that there's too many firms for any of them to have any price control. Uh, no one has any market power. We're going to assume a market here where the demand curve is 100 minus 2p equals q, and where our initial supply curve is qs equals p minus 8. Now, these are market equations. These are how the things will react overall. That QS is an aggregation of all of the firms put together. I also want to look at how an individual firm acts within that. So I'm going to assume a firm with a total cost of 10Q squared plus 10. Let's see, that's an average total cost of TC over Q, which is 10Q plus 10 over Q, and a marginal cost, which is of the total cost with respect to Q, which in this case is just 20Q. Okay, so we're going to see how the market acts as well as how an individual firm will act within that market. And then I'll, I'll give a second supply curve in a bit. So if I want to solve for this point, my initial equilibrium, it's straightforward enough. I need to set QD equal to QS1, which is 100 minus 2P equals P minus 8, 3P equals 108, P equals 36. Now this price is the same price for every single firm in the market. And so when we look at our individual firm later, They'll be taking the price of 36 as given. It'll be chosen without their ability to change it. Uh, if we wanted to keep going on this market stuff, we could say that Q is equal to P minus 8. 36 minus 8 is 28. Cool. All righty. Now, how does our individual firm act within this? Well, our individual firm takes that price of 36 as given and is going to do what they always do, which is setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Now, because price is given, this price is a flat demand curve. Uh, I always tell my students, as long as we're using straight lines, marginal revenue curves are the same as demand curves, just with double the slope. Well, this demand curve has a slope of zero, which means the marginal revenue curve has the same slope, and it is the demand curve, and it is price. All of those things are the same in perfect competition. So that said, what we're really doing, because this is perfect competition, is we're setting P equal to MC. So 36 equals 20Q. 20Q, which means Q equals 1.8. So this individual firm chooses a point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and produces 1.8 units of the good. Now, how much profit does the firm make? We need to solve next for average total cost. We find where average total cost, what average total cost is at 1.8. Uh, let's see, ATC was, what was it? 10Q plus 10 over Q, 10 times 1.8 plus 10 divided by 1.8, which is 18 plus 5.5s equals 23. Point fives. So the firm's profit then 
quantity times price minus average total cost is 1.8 times 36 minus 23.5s, which comes out to be 22.4. All right, there we go. We've successfully linked our supply and demand market in the short run with our individual firm. We found that supply and demand is chosen by market forces beyond one firm's control, and when that firm takes prices given, it will maximize profit according to marginal revenue because marginal cost. Because it's perfect competition, that's the same thing as same price equals marginal cost. And there we go. Now, if we move towards the long run, we're not going to see these profits sustained indefinitely because there's free entry in the market. And if firms are making economic profit, other firms will enter. And when they do, that will be a shift from supply one to supply two. And when they do this, there will be a new market price given. And we should see it go right up to there. Pretend those touch. I drew it well. Right up to there is the long run output, uh, which is where all excess profit has gone away and all the firms are breaking even and doing fine. If the price went lower than that, there'd be losses and firms would leave the market. This is the equilibrium where entry and exit stops and all the firms are solvent. All the remaining firms are solvent. Anyway, so let's do a new supply curve. Let's say that supply US2 is equal to uh, P plus 40. And we still have the same demand curve, which is 100 minus 2P. Well, let's see, 100 minus 2P equals P plus 40. 60 equals 3P. P equals 20. You get our market Q out of that. Uh, 20 plus 4 is, 20 plus 40 is 60. All right, so supply has increased. More firms have entered and price has fallen. How does this affect the individual firm? Well, we're still gonna set marginal revenue, which now is equal to price because we're in perfect competition, equals marginal cost. 20 equals 20Q, Q equals one. And then profit, let's see. In this case, pretending I drew it right, that price hits the bottom of the average total cost curve. Well, let's calculate average total cost anyway first. ATC is equal to 10 times Q plus 10 over Q is just 20. So profit then equals quantity times price minus average total cost is equal to one times 20 minus 20 equals zero. And if that's the case, this market will stabilize. There will be no profit whatsoever for remaining firms, but there will also be no entry or exit and so our market will settle down and be equilibrated. Uh, so yeah, I hope this is useful to you. Oh, one last thing. Say I wanted to highlight the profit in our first case. This price minus average total cost times quantity deal, that's gonna be a rectangle between average total cost and price. Now you'll have to forgive me for that top one. It doesn't quite work. There we go. Uh, everything above the average total cost, below price, and times the quantity. And in the second one, there just isn't one because that rectangle is $0 high. So I hope this is useful to you. If not, too bad, you've already wasted your time. Good luck econing everybody and thanks for watching.